Uh, our guests uh, in this segment, uh, twofold, uh, we'll get ready to talk to Dale Lee, the president of the WVA, in a few minutes. Uh, before that, Jeff Wilkerson from the Department of Public Works in the city of Martinsburg. Jeff, good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, gentlemen. How are you all today? We are well. I understand that uh, this was our first real serious uh, winter event. Uh, I know we had something a little bit earlier, but this is the first real serious one. Uh, how did you do with the uh, city of Martinsburg and the roads, Jeff? What's our current state? Well, I think we're in good shape. I think uh, our roads are about 90% open. We're still dealing with a couple neighborhoods um, that we're trying to get open. Uh, the problem was we just couldn't get to everything yesterday before dark. And then, of course, once everything froze as cold as it got, it's going to take a little while this morning um, to get the rest of the uh, neighborhoods open back up. Um, we're still salting. We're still using our normal protocols for snow removal. But when it gets below 18 degrees, the the road salt doesn't work kind of uh, like it like it normally does so we, we, we've got those areas salted and once the sun gets up i think we'll be in good shape and more snow is supposed to come thursday night into friday jeff i understand could be two three four inches uh, or so uh what will your plans be in regards to pre-treating roads or dealing with roads that haven't been completely cleared before that comes down well, hopefully by the end of today, um, we'll have everything cleared and everything open. So we should be in good shape. Of course, with all the salt that's on the road, uh, everything will already be pre-treated. Um, so we're already in our um, 12-hour shift rotation for snow removal. So we'll, we'll keep that going the rest of the week, and that'll roll right into Thursday night into Friday morning. In the city, there are some state roads that pass through. Uh, do you care for those, or does that go back to the state? We both work on them together. It usually just depends on the whoever gets to them first. Uh, the state good, does a good job of, of trying to get into the city and help us with our main drags, Queen Street, um, King Street, Winchester Avenue, Raleigh Street. Those are some examples of some of the streets that are actually state routes. Anybody in the city listening to this program right now whose road needs attention, do they need to contact you, or are you already aware of the road? We're aware of most of them, um, but they can feel free to call our public works department um, if they have some issues or if they think that uh, we have missed something. Um, we're still trying to collect garbage as well, along with uh, snow removal. So we've got a lot going on with limited resources. And Jeff, in regards to your supplies for cinders, salt, pre-treat, brine, all that good stuff, uh, is your supply ready to hold out through what looks like it could be an adventurous winter? Yeah, we're in good shape. We usually we usually have two two to three hundred tons of salt on hand uh, at any given time, so we should be in good shape with whatever's coming. Has the supply chain been restored in regards to you being able to get what you need when you need it? Yeah, most of our salt comes from Baltimore, and usually once we call, we get we get everything delivered within a few days. Uh, good morning, Jeff. You mentioned 18 degrees has been kind of a critical time. If it gets warmer than 18 degrees, I, probably uh, the in, situation's improved a great deal. But those roads that are not cleared early, that have all the, the snow cleared, then they're subject to freezing and refreeze, subject uh, freezing and refreeze. How do you address that if it stays below 18 degrees? Of course, we'll still we'll still apply salt to those areas, but if it's not if it's below 18 degrees, we might go up and throw some uh, some of the the cinders down, the the stone dust down, at least for traction, until the temperature gets up or the sun comes up to help that salt uh, actually melt it. Any final questions for Jeff or Jeff? Any other information you need to get out? Yeah, no, I just appreciate everybody's. Uh, cooperation when we have these storms staying off the road staying home uh if possible so that that our crews can can do their job jeff i did a shout out to the uh state seg uh, segment because i do not drive on the city road in the morning but i want to applaud you and also the state workers uh these roads are reasonably good shape there are sections that you have to be careful with but considering the very cold weather we've had uh, i think you guys have done a marvelous job well, I appreciate that, and I will definitely pass that along to our crews. One last question. 300 tons. How many snowstorms is that? It all depends. It, just, it all depends. Like right now, we had, what, three inches the other day. Well, the original storm we had last week, we had four inches, but the next day it got to 40 degrees for the next two days. So that snow was gone 
uh, you know, in no time. Now we had three inches yesterday, and as cold as it, cold as it is, it'll be around for a week or so. So that's kind of how we have to uh, work around storms to see how much salt we're going to use. It just depends on your uh, your temperatures and, and the variables after the fact. Yeah, it won't be above freezing until Tuesday. Jeff, thank you very much. We appreciate the work you're doing. All right. I appreciate it. You guys have a good day. Thank Thanks you. Thanks, you too. Jeff Wilkerson from the City of Martinsburg uh, Department of Public Works via telephone. Dale Lee, the president of the West Virginia Education Association. Oh, Dale, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. How are you? Excellent. Thank you. Are you in Charleston? Uh, no, actually, my second grandson was born Saturday, and, and I'm taking this week to help my daughter with uh, both both my grandsons and just enjoying them for right now. You get a basketball under that arm yet? <laughs> oh well, there was one in the in the bassinet. I, <laughs> I don't know how I got there. I'm, is he taken to your coaching yet? No. Yeah, well, the the uh, the oldest one is three and a half, and he played itty bitty league basketball this year, mm-hmm. and. and uh, he, he listened to Pop's coaching. <laughs> Got to use that weak hand. You can't just always go with the strong hand and the strong side. Gotta, we use that weak, right. work, it, work it early, work it early. Uh, Dale, right. uh, your impressions of the governor's state of the state and his intentions for state employees this year? Well, the intention is to give a an aggregate 5% raise. And, and even though he said 5% across the board, I don't think that's what it will be. I believe it will be something like... Uh, Twenty four hundred and forty dollars across the board. Uh, that helps the people coming into the profession and getting our beginning salaries up to make us more competitive, which is not a bad thing to do. Uh, I am a little concerned that uh, there was no mention of school discipline and the mental and emotional health of the students. We have to address that issue really quick and. Um, we need to address the retirees and particularly the minimal amount to prevent the pre-Medicaid employee uh, retirees from having any premium increase. I mean, you're only looking at $3,325,000. That's that's nothing in the budget to size of West Virginia. Did the uh, legislature not attempt to address the discipline issues last year with some legislature bill? I mean, uh, Dale? They did. They did with uh, the middle schools and, and the secondary schools that if you disrupted three times, you uh, you could remove the kid and they couldn't come back during the class period. And if they were removed three times within a month, they were suspended. But that's not the answer to this. The answer to this is to to work on these issues the kids have at an early age. And if we don't catch them in the elementary level, them waiting till the middle school and the high school, we, we've waited too late. Will they be attempting to address that aspect of it with legislation this year that you're aware of? There, There is a bill to, to include the same uh, level into the elementary school, but I don't think that's the answer. Uh, Senator Grady has made this one one of her priorities, so we'll be working with her. I actually have a meeting with her next week uh, when I get back to – to look at solutions, uh, State Board President Paul Hardesty has said that what he would like to do is to uh, renew an innovation zones that we had in, in the 20 teens that put an alternative setting in the elementary school that you could work on the behavior issues and the and the uh, academics at the same time. And when we did that in a pilot level in the 20, I think it was like 2012, 2013. What we saw was discipline referrals improved by 74% and academics increased by 72%. It works. And we need to do that on a larger scale. Bill or John? Uh, Dale, I've asked this question before, and I'll probably ask in the future. Uh, a couple of so years ago, uh, you and your colleagues did a very intensive uh, study of what was wrong with the school system and how we could best fix the school system. And one of the intents was to use that with the legislators and to emphasize and ba- uh, backed up with with hard data of some of the steps should be taken. Uh, I've never received, I've never heard the reception or the reaction of the legislators to this study. Well, it's, it's uh, 
interesting that you said that. I, I actually drove back to Charleston yesterday for a press conference. We, in November, we surveyed, did a, a poll of about 700 of our members, which makes it a valid poll, and found the same results as we did when we did the listening tour a few years back. Number one issue is is uh, attracting people in the profession and keeping them in the profession through salary and benefits and respect. And uh, right behind it is the the discipline issue. Uh, we will be taking those poll results. We did the press conference yesterday. We'll we'll take those poll results to the Senate uh, Education Committee and the House Education Committee and work diligently to try to get them to 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 do something but um you know it's it's i've said repeatedly they don't let me vote up there on on anything i've tried a couple times and and they uh kind of look at me strange but uh, Mm -hmm. they don't let me vote in those committees yeah pay i'm sorry one quick uh pay short and uh, teacher shortage and discipline are two big issues is there Mm -hmm. a third or fourth issue that you're trying to drive home to the legislators School yeah. safety is one that I think of. School safety is one of them, and, and the fourth one would be, you know, they keep wanting to pass legislation mandating what we're going to teach and how we teach it and when we teach it and everything else. We're not relying on the experts, the, the educators in the classroom, to determine what the class needs and how, how to get them there. Uh, I, when I was in the classroom, I used to teach three classes of, uh, algebra one and after the first week or so they were never on the same page at the same time because kids learn at different different paces and algebra is one of those courses that you have to have this concept down before you move on to the next concept and so you know you you deal with the kids that, that you have in the classroom and you work with them uh, that's allowing for the expertise of, of the teacher the legislature doesn't want to do that. They want to mandate what you're going to teach and when you're going to teach it, and and even things that work, take them away from you. Dale, this is John. If you were given free reign, I want to get back to this discipline bill. If you were given free reign, what would the elements of the perfect discipline bill be? Well, I would start with this program in the elementary schools with the alternative school setting. And then secondly, I would uh, expand on our community and schools. I would uh, try a program. Uh, I talk about uh, algebra, for example. Um, I I used to teach algebra one, and and I would teach algebra two in in special ed, uh, but it was never a true algebra two. You know, it's really more of of doing the the algebra one uh, concepts and, and bringing them home. So in my last year in the classroom, I did a uh, uh, inclusion class of Algebra II, and I hadn't had Algebra II since 1974. Kind of forgot it. So I would work with the students. I would I would uh, do the work with the students and and do the homework and everything else to refresh it. But yet we expect our parents to help kids with homework when they haven't had it in 20 or 30 years. Why don't we have a setting where that uh, parents feel comfortable in coming into the cl- into the school, uh, maybe in the evening or something, and and working on those components and and refreshing themselves on ways to help their students. Uh, we got to make school more that that they are not afraid to come and and uh, relish that fact. Daly is our guest. He is the president of the West Virginia Education Association. Don, did you have a follow up? Now, I'm, you talk about there's concern that the legislature is dictating what the curriculum and, and such is. Do you think a solution to the discipline problem might be just to take the shackles off of the local school administration to allow them to deal with, obviously, within proper boundaries, to deal with discipline issues in the classroom the way the principal and, and the administration thinks is, is correct for that school? Well, I think to really be effective, you have to uh, involve everyone in the school. You have to work with the, the teachers, the aides, the, the service personnel. Everyone has to have a voice in how you want to attack the discipline in your school and come up with the rules and come up with the consequences. 
and then make it fair and equitable and consistent. That's uh, when I was teaching. That's what I was really the tough guy, the bad guy, so to speak. I made them follow the rules, and the kids would tell you though I was I was fair and consistent. If you broke the rule, it didn't matter who you were or, or uh, what status you were, or if you were an athlete or whatever, the consequences were, were going to be there. And, and uh, I had high expectations, and I think that's one of the things that you can do. But secondly, these kids are coming with different problems with uh, the opioid crisis, with seeing uh, you know, some of them come to school passing people that have needles in their arms and things like that, dealing with issues that we didn't think about years ago. Uh, we have to, to start addressing those issues for them. Uh, the homelessness is, is up tremendously. Uh, the number of kids that, that don't live in a home with, with either parent. And, you know, we lead the nation in the number of uh, kids that uh, are raised by grandparents. We, we have to address all those issues and make sure that we're reaching the child in their emotional and, and, and mental states to, to, to deal with these discipline issues. But would you support a process where that the those decisions are made at the local school level oh, maybe, sure. as opposed sure. to across the board? Sure, sure. I mean, every like, like every class learns differently and every class is different. Every school is different. And uh, uh, you need to – that's why it's important to – have the the buy-in of of all the educators there at the school and and come up with what works for you. Dale, there's a bill from the Senate Education Committee that would allow the teachers to uh, teach faith and science on the same uh, same level. In fact, equating faith and science. Uh, Are you familiar with this bill? The bill was in in, uh, Senate Ed yesterday. And there's a committee substitute that was passed, and, and I haven't looked at the committee substitute yet. Uh, it was uh, artificial intelligence, as, as, uh, uh, and that's, I have to look at the committee substitute to see what they came up with. The original bill, what, the original how was that bill would, okay. would The original bill would be that there is a, uh, um, like a creationism type of, of aspect but i believe that was changed in in the committee to say something like scientifically proved i, I have to go back and look at that and again uh taking care of helping my my daughter with with these two grandsons last night i i didn't go in and look at that i didn't think i'd be doing a radio interview this morning but uh uh, my buddy Rob texts me at about eight thirty. and said, can you come on? Uh, absolutely, I can. Yeah. Hey, I've been doing pretty good you know, giving yeah, you advance yeah, notice yeah. over the last couple of years. Yeah, the, the, yeah I mean, we're following back to that. Well, give, me, give me 15 minutes notice. He's good. I used to give you five. Yeah. <laughs> I, know. I know. Hey, you always come through, Dale. You always come through, big guy. Hey, uh, back to you. You referenced this earlier a little bit, and I want to get into it in maybe even more detail if we could, and that was the survey of 700 of your members mm-hmm. in regards mm-hmm. to the issues in the classroom. What was your last year in the classroom, Dale? Uh, 2008. I've been the president now. For, this is my 16th year as, as the president, and, and I tell people all the time, you know, it, it's changed dramatically over that 16 years. I challenged Superintendent Black, and she and I went, uh, as soon as she became state superintendent, she and I went to Logan and spent a day uh, or a, a morning in a third grade classroom because it's changed so much. I, I challenged other people on the board and, and even in central office to go spend a day and, and the legislature to go spend a day with the teacher, do everything the teacher does during that day. And they'll get a true understanding of what education is. I'm in classrooms more than most people uh, because outside of the legislative session, I travel the state and and visit schools and and classrooms, and I see a lot. And my daughter's a middle school teacher, so I I talk to her every day. But it's still different than than when when it was uh, 16 years ago when I was in the classroom or uh, for Superintendent Blatt, it's been like 17, 18 years People at the, the State Department, is, it's been a few years since they've been in the classroom. And, and for our legislature, the last time many of them were in the classroom was when they were students. So uh, go see what it's like now. 
Your survey found only 2% of the 700 who were surveyed felt that they were satisfied with the current working conditions in their school right. or in uh, in education. I don't know of another profession where only 2% would say they're satisfied with current working conditions. Uh, that's astonishing. If we had done that survey 16 years ago, Dale, what do you estimate the percentage of satisfied <laughs> teachers would have been? Uh, it's It certainly wouldn't have been two percent that were were satisfied it would have been higher than that but uh i don't think you would have ever gotten it to a point where it was much more than like 60 percent but this is two yes two yeah yeah yeah. it it is astonishing and and it it tells you the reason that we have 1705 positions across the state of west virginia without a certified teacher in people who are leaving the profession uh the higher ed policy commission reported that uh, there's they had a decrease of 14 percent of the number of kids going into education to begin with so you're you're reducing the pool to start with people are dissatisfied they're leaving the profession at a far greater rate than than ever before it's the perfect storm and we have to address that that's why we did the survey and that's why we'll be going to the legislature and saying we have to fix this when they saw the problem with corrections, what they do? They gave a ten thousand dollar pay raise. When they saw the problem with uh, doctors, and particularly in, in rural communities, what they do? They they increase the PEI reimbursement from fifty five percent of Medicaid to one hundred ten percent. I know money's not always the answer, but but money is one of the factors in this. We have to address that. Fifty-four percent of the survey participants said they're confident they'll continue working in education as a career. Mm -hmm. Nearly half of them said they are much more likely to retire or leave education earlier than planned. Are we headed toward an education cliff in public education in West Virginia? We've been heading that way for the last several years. Uh, 2018, there were 727 positions without a certified teacher in them. Just, um, what, five Five years later, that has more than doubled to 1,705. Yeah, we're headed for a cliff. Hey, Dale, what goes into getting a teaching certificate? Uh, it's it's the program through college. There's uh, four years of rigorous training, pedagogy, uh, a lot of observations, a, a training period where you're doing the student teaching. So it, it is quite involved. So if a math teacher or a novelist, if a math teacher wanted to teach math or a novelist wanted to teach creative writing, um, would I have to go back to school for four years to get a teaching certificate? Actually, if you already have your, your uh, bachelor's degree, uh, there are certification programs that you start on a permit, and what you do is you go back and get the pedagogy. You go back and get the um, uh, training that you need. You know, a lot of people will know the material, but can't relate that over into to the students. Uh, you know, I'm a I was a Big Bang Theory fan, and Sheldon Cooper knew everything, but he couldn't couldn't relate it to people. I, I've uh, you have to be able to number one manage a classroom with this one, get the kids involved, and uh, Figure out ways, because every kid's different, figure out different ways to present the material so that they catch it. And does the the school system, for an existing teacher who's not certified, a non-certified teacher, will the school system pay for that teacher to get the certificate? No. No, the, the teacher pays for it himself. Dale, on that note, we need to end our segment. I appreciate you coming through. I had the governor scheduled today, but they called him in sick today. So, uh, I, I've pinched it for the governor several times. So I, uh, <laughs> particularly when we were doing the roads, Bon, I, I would uh, travel around the state with him, and and I would tell people in the big beginning. You know, I'm a coach, so uh, we're waiting to, for the governor to arrive. I don't know if you're going to get the one-minute timeout speech or the 10-minute halftime speech. <laughs> okay. en- well, enjoy the new grandson, Dale. I sure will. Congratulations you. to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. 